present paper is 5 and its module 6 gender as defined and understood in psychology myself Deepa Puneta, Department of Psychology, University of Allahabad. I am professor of psychology. Today I would be presenting a paper which has a gender and uh, its understanding in psychology and there are certain you know aspects which are uh, you know being dealt in this paper that what is gender in psychology, the psychoanalytic theory of Sigmund Freud, feminine theory of Corinne Harney, psychosocial theory of Eric Erickson, gender schema theory of Sandra Bem and there are some references. Uh, in the starting, what is gender in psychology? Sex can be defined as a physical characteristics of being male or female. Gender is defined as the psychological aspect of being masculine or feminine. The expectation of one's culture, the development of one's personality and one's sense of identity all are affected by the concept of gender. The present chapter addresses the theoretical framework of gender in psychology. Over the years, several attempts has been proposed to explain gender development. First is psychoanalytic theory and this is a classical theory in psychology also. And this psychoanalytic theory proposed by Freud defines that some aspects of gender identity result from the unconscious psychological processes uh, rather than more conscious processes such as modeling or actively seeking for information consistent with such areas. This is a study by Wharton 2005. In, in psychoanalytic approach which was proposed by by Sigmund Freud, but its application to gender socialization was more fully outlined in late 1970s by Nancy Conroe. For Conroe, the key factor in the development of gender identity is the role of mother as a primary caregiver. This was the research based on uh, Stockard's 1999. Because children spend more time with mothers and Conroe argues that the first, their first identification with the mother is feminine. The theory of instinct, Freud recognized that there are two fundamental motivating forces and the first one is the constructive one which is called eros or life instinct. And the other one is destructive in nature which is called thanatos or death instinct. The conscious mind, there are levels of conscious mind. Freud considers that there are three uh, you know levels of conscious mind and the first conscious mind includes everything that whatever we are aware of. This is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think, talk about rationally. The pre-conscious mind is the another level which is our memory, which is not always our part of conscious mind, but can be retrieved easily at any time and brought into our awareness. The unconscious mind is the reservoir of feelings, thought and urges and uh, images outside of the conscious awareness. Freud considers that there are three components of personality and they make a structure of personality and those structural aspect of personality is very important in understanding the uh, one's you know personality makeup also. First component of personality is made of a of it. It is innate in nature. It is you know child is born with the id impulses. They are biologically very important drives and whenever the child is hungry 
or whenever child is uncomfortable, he can also you know react in a very natural manner. There are certain you know concepts which are related to Eid impulses which is called libidinal impulses. Libidinal impulses are all the time for the sake of pleasure. Therefore, Freud considers that Eid is governed by the pleasure principle and it has nothing to do with the conscious mind or conscious word. Whatever is happening is the in the word, it is not aware of that. It has these impulses which are animal and instinctual in nature. If there is any need, its immediate gratification is very important for it to be satisfied. And when a child you know starts to grow up and you know tries to see his mother is the only person over there who is taking care of her or the other caring agents are also there. If they are there, they are also taking care of them. Whenever child is hungry, mother provides food and what happens that by eating that food, child is not only satisfied for the need for hunger, but also tries to relate it with its mother who becomes a secondary source of reinforcement at the same time secondary source of re, uh, you know, pleasure also. And he gradually from time to time whenever child is hungry, whenever child's bed is wet, whether whenever child is uncomfortable, he gets tension. And because the tension is being reduced by mother, therefore, he becomes more you know attached to mother because all the time by reducing that tension, mother is trying to satisfy his needs and satisfy his pleasure also. Therefore, there is a kind of secondary sense of attachment with the mother and mother becomes also the agent who is satisfying his needs. Therefore, sometimes you know because of mother's satisfaction, mother's expectation, what she likes, what she does not like. Sometimes if a child is not behaving properly, mother may be showing some gestures which are unapproval of the you know child's behavior or mother may say something which may be not a, you know no, which may be like a verbal punishment then child comes to know that there is something else than me i am me and mother is something else which is in reality which is outside and i have to act according to the wishes of mother then there is a you know in during one or half years of age there is a emergence of ego. Since ego is originated from the reality that is why it, it is all the time re related to reality awareness and acts according to reality principle. Its domain is related to ego which is you know very small space. But Whatever child does by is guided by ego is all the time related to reality. It tries to deny the eat principle also at that time. The job of ego is to mediate between eat impulses and super ego. When a child becomes one and half, uh, gradually becomes uh, four and five, year, five years of age then he gets according to Freud's theory of psychosexual development tries to get attachment with the mother and mother's attachment is related to sex and he like and the girl child is also attracted to father sexually. Then what happens that when they start you know uh, growing up there is a emergence of conscience and when they are conscious then they realize that this is not very fair this is not a, you know socially very much you know approved action that's why 
they start to identify with their parents of same sex. And here is the story of Oedipus complex also, which indicates that during the um, past, there was a Greek mythological figure, character who was, uh, who used to, you know, have sexually attracted to her mother and tries to, you know, possess her. Therefore, he killed his father and uh, tried to take possession of mother. When he came to know about this job, this kind of act, then he went to the jungle and broken his eyes. This is called Oedipus complex and resolution of the Oedipus complex. Depending on this kind of, you know, Greek mythological story, there is also in Freud's theory in uh, uh, super emergence of superego and conscience. Superego is called to be a moral principle or is guided by moral principle. Whereas, Feshbach is a psychologist who pro tried to point out that superego is guided by nirvan principle. It is not like Buddhist nirvan and you know, moksha kind of thing, but he says that cessation of stimulation is the nirvana. You stop, you know, reacting to any kind of stimulus of the world, your body stops it, then it is nirvana. You know, because it is, there is a, you know, uh, thanatos also, which aims at destroying everything. If you destroy everything yourself also and do not react at all, then you find a stage of, you know, a stage of nirvana. And based on that principle, here is also that superego is guided by conscience and ego ideal. There are some of the ideals which superego wants to attain, but not at the cost of, you know, and not at the cost of ego's approval. If ego denies it, then one cannot do that kind of behavior. Then it means that according to Freud, the ego is the mediator of personality for the balance adjustment in the world. Ego has to control or has to make a balance between it and superego. The next theory in the Freud, he is talking about psychosexual development. Thus, in the psychosexual development, the basic thesis of Freud is that, that the sexuality is in the bodily parts during the childhood up to 5 years of age. And it starts from birth to 1 and half years age, it is called oral stage because all sexuality is related to oral aspect of the body. Uh, the child is, you know, doing different kind of oral activities like sucking, feeding, making noises with the mouth, all are related to uh, pleasure, which will give him pleasure as it is called sexual pleasure, though it is child's, you know, it is pre-genital stage. It comes again um, under the pregenital stage, that is why it is, you know, that kind of pleasure. The focus on this stage is really in weaning. When parents try to teach children to feed, you know, um, in different manner, eat different objects or food substances, at the same time, they also start insisting child to do you know, toilet training, then the weaning starts. But in the beginning, the child sucks mother's, you know, milk. Later on, if he comes to suck the natural, you know, food objects, then this is called weaning, which is creating conflict sometimes in the child. Second stage is anal stage, which is from one and half years to one, uh, three years. And here, the child knows that 
parents will insist him for the sake of training go to toilet in the real time in the fixed time in a fixed place and uh, do not you know make any uh, nuisance over there they sometimes try to insist the child and request child please go to toilet or please eliminate your waste product so that you will feel better. This is the aim of the parents that they try to regulate their bodily function, they train for that and once they have a command on it, once they learn these kind of thing, they start also being, uh, being act in a stubborn manner. They would retain the waste project uh, products and try to you know be requested by parents that please do it in a regular time in regular place and in regular manner and this gives an emergence to ego also in a different way to the child the third stage is phallic stage in this time the sexuality is located in genitals. They become aware of their genital sexual uh, you know, organs and at the same time there is also emergence of conscience through the identification with the same sex parents. Next stage is latency period which is from 6 years to puberty and it becomes very different from the earlier three stages. Freud says that in this you know time child is engrossed in playing something with the friends and uh, he also likes to go to school, he likes to do some intellectual activities and activities with the friends. It seems that sexuality has been vanished at this time. It happens that it is it that is why it is called latency period. Once Freud's critique has you know analyzed that the child is Sunday school going mind. He likes to go to school on Sundays also. He is engrossed in such kind of activities so much. The last stage is genital stage which is from puberty to death when there is an awareness of the sex and the heterosexual relationship with parents, it, uh, with her partners. Then what happens that if a development of child, sexuality, psychosexual development of child takes place in a normal manner. If he comes to the identification with the same sex parents, then this kind of development also is very much you know in a controlled manner. A child develops a controlled and balanced personality structure. The next theory is of feminine psychology which is proposed by Karen Harney. This is called a feminine psychology also and what happens that Karen Harney was the you know follower of Freud's ideology on psychoanalytic theory. But she was the first one who talked about panis envy. She has pointed out that Freud had said everything about the male psychology and male personality. Nothing has been taught about nor talked about female personality. Nancy Conro locates that the political and theoretical origin of psycho analytic feminism comes with Karin Harney in this way, whose theory formed the basis for the most recent revisions of psychoanalytic understanding of gender and for most psychoanalytic dissidents on the question of gender in the early period as well. Harney's idea were ignored for many years, but now they seem to be remarkably accepted. Karen Harney talks about the real self. The real self is emerged when there is a new anxiety, nothing you know is bothering to the child. 
and it comes from the interpersonal strategies of defense. In neurosis and human growth, she has divided the expensive solution into three distinct kinds, narcissistic, perfectionistic and arrogant vindictive type. And she talks about intrapsychic strategies of defense. She also talked about idealized self and in the search of glory. Next theory is of Erickson, who developed psycho and psychosocial theory of development. Erickson considers that psychodynamic theory, who emphasized mm, that the importance of social relationship is very important in personality development. According to this theory, uh, if we do not resolve the crisis during any stage, then we will continue to create events throughout the life, which will create that crisis until we have done psychosocial work necessary to resolve that crisis. He talks about eight stages of life and this is life span development. He does not stop only in the childhood or adolescent, but till the death what happens to the development of personality, he talks about that. In the infancy period, there is a crisis of trust and or mistrust. What happens that in social relationship, if parents do not treat the child properly, then child develops a sense of mistrust and that becomes a kind of crisis. If a child is uh, very affectionately treated by parents, then he develops the sense of trust and there is a hope. Next stage is toddler stage, which is from 18 months to 3 years. And in this stage, autonomy, shame or autonomy versus shame and doubts are there. In preschool stage, 3 to 6 years, and there is a more crisis related to initiativeness or guilt or uh, versus guilt. The next stage is childhood, which extends from 6 years to 12 years, and there is a virtue competence, and the crisis is related to industry versus inferiority. The next stage is adolescence, which is 18, 10, 12 years to 18 years, and here is all the time the identity and role confusion is the crisis. Young adults stage is from 12 to 40 years, where there is intimacy versus isolation is the main crisis. Middle adulthood ranges from uh, 40 years to 65 years where there is generativity versus stagnation and senior is a stage from 65 plus where there is a wisdom as a virtue, ego integrity versus despair is the developmental crisis. Now, next theory is given by Sandra Bem and uh, this is called gender schema theory. This is also a cognitive aspect of the theory, which considers that in cultures where distinctions between men and women are emphasized, children learn to use gender as the way to process information about the word. The cognitive structures or gender schemas help children organize information and maintain sense of consistency and pre predictability. For BEM, there are two characteristics of gender schema are particularly noteworthy. In cultures where children believe that what is acceptable and what is appropriate for females is not acceptable or appropriate for males. Wharton's research on 2005 indicates this statement. And secondly, the gender schemas tend to be androcentric. That is, children internalize the message that male 
and masculinity are standard or norm and are more highly valued than femininity or females. In this way, all these theories consider that how gender is you know uh, is accepted and described in different theoretical perspectives in psychology.